Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome back to the channel. First and foremost, we have to give all honor, all praise, and all glory to the Most High. Yahweh Hashem HaMashiach Yahweh Shai. We thank him so very much for another day. It is truly a blessing to be here another day, another Shabbat. He is, a, he is allowing all of us to observe another Shabbat because we can't take any of these days for granted. We are in the end days. So we have to make sure that we are thankful that the Most High is keeping us in his favor, that he hasn't blown our light out, and that we get to see another day. So in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And this is the day that y'all has made. We in the middle of summer, y'all, we here. I mean, I'm sure a lot of y'all feeling the heat like I'm feeling because it is a scorcher here on the East Coast. And um, But, you know, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day he has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. So the title of today's video is Control Your Thoughts, Don't Let Your Thoughts Control You. So this is all going to be coming out of 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. Um, well, really just 5, but I like the verses right before that, so I want to do that whole thing. But it's really 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Um, but before we do that, let's go into our foundational scriptures. So go ahead and pull out your Bible with the Apocrypha. And we are going to turn to Titus 2, read uh, Titus 2, 3 through 5. It kind of matches up there. Hallelujah. Um, and it reads as follows. The age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yah be not blasphemed. So again, <clears throat> Salakia, the title of today's video is Control Your Thoughts, Don't Let Your Thoughts Control You. So taking every thought captive requires intentionality because it's easy to just kind of let our mind run wild, you know? So we have to have, it's intentional for us to capture our thoughts. And willingness to invest in an intimate relationship with Hamashiach is through personal times of worship, reading Yah's word, and being led by the spirit. So a close relationship with Yahweh Hashem HaMashiach, Yahweh Shai, is key. So in this, um, in this kind of, in, in speaking in that, presence and speaking in that you receive both revelation and grace to become intentionally aware of your thought life, having a close relationship with Yahweh Bashem HaMashiach Yahweh Shai. So our greatest battles, many of the times are always in our head, ladies. <laughs> so staying positive and thinking pure thoughts is harder than it seems. It's I, I'm not trying to say it's easy. Just capture your thoughts. So this video is going to give us, I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. So be ready, have your notes, be ready, because I'm going to help you. So um, we have to understand that there's a process in how our thoughts work. So our thoughts lead to our beliefs and which lead to our actions, which leads to our quality of lives. So our thoughts have too great of an impact on us to not guard them and to keep them in Yah's will. So let's go to the foundational scripture that I spoke about. So let's go to 2 Corinthians and 10, and we're going to read uh, 3 through 5. So 2 Corinthians 10. And we're going to read three through five and it reads as follows for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of the most high and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of hamashiach so right here, Paul is trying to teach you two lessons, right in this letter to Corinth. He's trying to teach them two lessons, but it's for us too. So teaching us two lessons, taking captive every thought, and then also making sure that your thoughts are obedient to Yahweh Shai. So another primary lesson is that we are in a spiritual warfare. So that's why he speaks about that when he talks about verse three. 
So all of that, taking every thought is is extremely important. So let's look at verse really quick. So for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. So the flesh is powerless against the wiles of the devil. And if you look at verse four, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of strongholds. And those strongholds are the philosophies, the arguments, the proud opinions that we've all been taught. So bringing our thoughts into captivity means to bring them under control or to subjugate them, which kind of means the same thing, bring them under control. So either we can control our thoughts, like hence the title, or our thoughts can control us. So to take our thoughts captive also means to not allow each and every thought of ours to quickly control our beliefs and actions and emotions. You know, just because we think of something doesn't mean that we have to respond to it. So thinking that way, it will give us the necessary time and clarity of mind to kind of slow down a little bit. So to to, to determine this, if this is a thought that we should be led, uh, if this is a thought that we should be led by or not, if you want to determine that, then we can place our thoughts into two categories. One, those that align with Yah's truth and pushes us towards his will, or two, those that don't align with Yah's truth and pushes us away from him. So we must rid our minds of the thoughts not of the most high. So believing those that are instead. We have to believe those that are instead. So last night when I was doing a little more research, I heard a good analogy. And it goes like this. Think of your thoughts like they're on a conveyor belt. And some going to your actions, some of your thoughts are going to your feelings, and other thoughts are going to your beliefs. Now, you're the factory worker, and you must examine each and every thought that's on this conveyor belt. And you have to determine if it should influence you or not. So the deciding factor, if a thought should go on or get off, is going to be based on if it aligns with Yah's truth or not. So if it doesn't, then we are to implement part two of what Paul is talking about in these instructions, which is to make our thoughts obedient to Yahweh Shai. So we don't just stop at so we don't just stop at throwing away the lie. We then replace it with Yah's truth, right? So if our thoughts, because of our thoughts, don't align um, with the Most High, then it will lead to actions of disobedience if they don't align. So capturing our thoughts is not easy. I understand that. And we cannot do it without the Most High's power. That's what makes it easy, is that we have to do it with the Most High's power. And good for us, the good news is that the Most High makes his power available to all of us through prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay? So we have to pray for these things. And we always have to keep in mind that he knows our heart and he knows our thoughts. So I want to um, go to Ecclesiastes because we have to make an effort in doing this. So I want to go to Ecclesiastes and kind of bring home a scripture that not a lot of people... Um, or not a lot of people, me, um, I haven't always brought out because I don't always go to the book of Ecclesiastes. I go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, um, which is in the Apocrypha, but Ecclesiastes, I don't always go to. So that's after Psalms and Proverbs. So go to Ecclesiastes 10 and 20, because this is a really, really important scripture I want you guys to highlight. It says, curse not the king, no, not in thy thought, and curse not the rich in thy bedchamber. For a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the matter. So it's talking about angels. So that which hath wings should tell the matter to the Most High in the third heaven. So he knows our thoughts. So we have to make sure that we are taking all of this stuff seriously that we are making sure that we're, you know, trying to implement the steps to begin to say 
that's not of the most high or this is of the most high. I'll let this, you know, thought get, get, you know, within me and begin to, you know, have his truth be resonated with me. And if it's not, then to purge it out and capture it because all of us have our own minds and our own thoughts and it's not something and a lot of it i'll say this a lot of it is comes from your subconscious mind and things that you're taking in and things that you're hearing things that you're watching things that you're reading all of this stuff kind of creates what you're thinking about so we have to guard ourselves with some of these things don't watch the scariest movie just because it came out you know, don't listen to every secular song because it's popular at the time. There's spirits on all of this stuff. So that can in turn at a different time have a different thought that's put in your head because those spirits can now start to attach themselves to you. So when you're dealing with your king and he might say something or you might, you know, not like something that he's doing, you can have a whole argument within your head and not even have that argument with him, but have a whole argument that's going on in your head because of your own thoughts that you have to repent for. So we have to make sure that we're capturing these things when they happen. And it could be something that you're just not even dealing with your king, just anything. Anything just pops into your head. It doesn't even have to be subconscious. It might pop into your head. So we have to make sure that we capture every thought. That's why 2 Corinthians goes into it. So here's a few steps on how to do that. One, pray for discernment. This is simply asking the Most High to quickly reveal when you're having those negative thoughts and that you need to let go of. So because many times we don't even realize it, like I said, they can pop into your head. If we don't realize that a thought is even harmful, then we'll never reject it. So we desperately need the Most High's help to make this clear for us. So let's go to Matthew 21 and 22. Go to the book of Matthew 21 and 22. And I'm going to read the classic Matthew 21 and 22 reads in all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And that's why it says that whatever you ask in prayer and believing ye shall receive because it's not just asking for it because the most high again knows your thoughts so he knows if it's going to be something that he should grant you because he knows you really want it so we have to capture these thoughts because we really want to get into the kingdom we really want to put our best foot forward and cleaning up our garment in this time so the next tip is pray for him to reject those thoughts to help you reject those thoughts so once we have discerned that a thought is not of the most high then it's time to pray for him to help you reject it. So sometimes we want to believe a lie because it's easier to do. And we can't do that. You know, maybe it's something that we believe for a really long time and we don't want to let it go. Or it's, it, or you know, those type of things take a certain level of humility to get rid of. So we have to make sure that we are asking these things in prayer. That's why I brought that out. We ask these things in prayer so the most I can help us because you can't do it by yourself. There's no way. You're just not going to be able to succeed doing all this stuff by yourself. You have to ask the most high for your help. And he wants you to. He wants you to. You have to come to him and lean on him. So another tip is pray for him to replace those lies with his truth. So this is why it's so important that we get into Yah's word. I know I said it last week. I'm going to say it again because last week I went into having a burning desire for the word. So this is why it's so important to get into it. So we can replace things that we're thinking of, those lies, with his word. And we can do so through studying his word and through memorizing his scriptures. So let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Second Timothy 2 and 15 is study to show thyself approved unto Yah, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. Lean not to your own understanding, as they also say in the scriptures. Rightly dividing the word of truth, study to show yourself approved. And I also want to go into Ephesians 5 and 19. So go to the book of Ephesians. And 5 and 19 reads as follows. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Most High. 
So I wanted to bring that one out because that goes to what I said about you can replace those lies with the truth, but you have to be in his word, reading and studying. And then like, it's like speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns, because you'll find that when you're starting to study the scriptures, you'll be thinking about them all the time. You'll be thinking about them when you're in the shower, you'll be thinking about them when you're just sitting around, it'll just pop into your head. <clears throat> so like, you'll just start to um, replace your thoughts with these beautiful, wonderful, godly thoughts. So you have to definitely work on it for sure. And it will happen. Um, the next tip is your mind, not just your behavior, must change. So let's go to Romans 12 and 2. <clears throat> Slap you. The book of Romans 12 and 2. Reads as follows. And this goes into your mind, not just your behavior, must change. And it says, Romans 12 and 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. All praises. We have to make sure that we are changing our mind, not just our behavior. So you have to capture those thoughts. So another tip is think through your problems rather than just react to them. Think them through rather than just react to them. So go to 2 Timothy 1 and 7. We're bouncing all around today. All right, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 reads as follows. For the Most High hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we have to make sure that we are not just reacting to things. He gave you a sound mind. Think things through. Think through your problems rather than just react to them. It says right here, he's given us a spirit, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So you smart, ladies. You smart. Use kind. Use patience. Let me stop. <laughs> if y'all know where that comes from. Um, but uh, uh, so like, yeah, no folly. Um, the next one is choose to focus your thoughts on the right things as well. Choose to focus your thoughts on the right things. So let's go to Philippians 4 and 8. Choose to focus your thoughts on the right things. Philippians is so short, um, so easy to pass it. Oh, here we go. All right, so Philippians 4 and 8. Focus, choose to focus your thoughts on the right thing. So Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue... And if there be any praise, think on these things. I love that one. So I want you to think of your mind as a garden. And your thoughts are your seeds. And thought seeds that are against Yah's will will grow into weeds. And those thoughts that grow into weeds will suck all the nutrients out of the soil, just like a regular weed in your garden. So making it, it's gonna make it more difficult for a good thought to grow. So we wanna throw away those before they even get a chance to take root. And we also wanna pray that the good thoughts become more fruitful. So we wanna ask the Most High for constant reminders of his word and of his will. And his power, his love, and his truth will take root in our lives and bring forth fruitful lives that give him the glory. That's it, ladies. All praises to the Most High. Yahweh Bashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai for this lesson today. Hopefully it wasn't too long. I just wanted to make sure that we are capturing our thoughts. My king had a great idea. He was like, some of the stuff that you've already talked about, you can look at your notes and like break down one of the points and capturing your thoughts was one of the points in I think another video that I had. 
and it was he's so right i'm like we have not spoken about how to do it because <laughs> it says it but it's very important and i was listening to um a truth song this morning by uh, ishan burgundy and it had a guy hezekiah on it and it and um i think it's called streets of gold on his newest album lost sheep which listen to by the way the whole album is fire um and that song is my king's favorite song and and the words of that song are so beautiful i might bring it out in another video the words are so poetic and it just reminds you of what we need to look forward to it reminds you of how you're his chosen people it reminds you of how you should walk in your in your in your um what kind of stance that you should have you know what kind of confidence you should have in knowing that you are chosen and you are his child and i really wanted to just end with that and just encourage you guys that we have to make sure that we're capturing our thoughts and taking all these little commands seriously so we can make sure that we are lucky enough to be and worthy enough to escape the things that's coming on this earth and to hopefully see his kingdom. I love all of you guys. Thank you for sitting again with me for another Shabbat service. Um, Y'all willing, I'll be back next week. Hopefully you guys had a great new moon um, and continue to enjoy the day. Get ready, get your Sabbath prep. We're about to leave and go get our little rotisserie chicken like we always say, my husband, you know, obviously still eating chicken. I'm, you know, working out and eating right and very limited <laughs> with what I'm eating. <laughs> um, but uh, pray for your girl because, you know, the pounds is coming off and I'm excited. But anyway, that's a whole nother video. Um, but I thank you guys again for watching. I'm very excited to always sit here in front of you guys. I feel very honored to be able to uh, have the words in my hand and be able to help the body. So if you guys have any questions, comments, please hit me up in the comment section. Please email me. My email is also within that YouTube profile uh, on my page. And I love to hear from you guys. So I love all of you and Shabbat Shalom.